Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here alongside 2000, 2003, great way to start, 1993 French Open doubles champion Murphy Jensen. What's up, man? Well, what's the difference between 2003 and 1993 except, uh, you know, the technology? No internet. The no internet, the play, the cell phones. The iPads, iPods. You know, Christopher Whatever. Columbus was still on the circuit. Mm -hmm. um, Nasty uh, slice back. It was rough tennis Murray. back then. Yeah, it wasn't easy. You know, it was when uh, tennis Plan players were tennis players. Yeah, <laughs> now they're all soft and everything. Yeah, you know, slackers. There's no question. <laughs> all right. Well, you of course are back in town because the Washington Castles are gearing up to. Uh, Probably go undefeated again this season, right? Wow. You know, to go undefeated big, is... Making a big prediction, right? You know, I, I make no predictions. You know, I, I <laughs> work uh, my magic in following the uh, lead of starting with our owner, Mark Ein, and our draft went really, really well. We've got the addition of Anastasia Rodionova, and, and everyone was worried about losing Renee Stubbs. Great I mean, doubles because, player. Because of the doubles. Yep. You know, you got to play good doubles to be successful in world team tennis. We've got Leander Payas now playing some unbelievable ball. He, he beat my boy, uh, my Brian Bros buddies. I uh, know, Brian buddies. your Brian Brothers yeah. buddies. Um, yeah, the Brian Brothers, you know, um, are as good as they come. And we've got Leander Payas, number one in the world right now. So, you know, we've got a great, great uh, future ahead of us. Mm -hmm. There's no question. And if we do the little things, you know, last year we went 16 to 0. The cool thing about it is we never looked, we never focused on the scorecard. We never even thought about a record until it was like 14 or 12 and 0. It really wasn't on our mind because in that season, we're so busy getting to the next town, mm -hmm. getting to the next practice, preparing and doing the things. It happened so fast, we didn't have time to think. And when you've got a, a guy like me leading the charge with that you know, definitely doesn't want to think too much. Um, the more I was, I, th I was thinking it. I wasn't going to say it, but I was thinking no, it. <laughs> thinking has never been my friend. It's been my <laughs> enemy. So, you know, I kind of go with you know, Bobby Reynolds is playing great mm -hmm. ball this year and being a journeyman as he is. But he he every year has elevated his game from the first year he's been here to last year. And now even on the tour, he's getting some big wins and big strikes. Nice. Well, we were yeah. I mean, today we're going to talk about some dubs. You mentioned Leander, and he uh, he beat the Brian Bros in the finals of the Aussie Open this year, so yep. he's playing great. Yep. Uh, won that with uh, Radek Stepanek, uh, who was just returning out of his mind that match. So well, I think the always thing, had a great return. I so. think the thing there to look at, you know, if you're a three, five, four, zero doubles player, is that Leander Pass adds something new to his game every year. And this year, he's added a, a, a singles player. Now moved to the doubles side of things. And he, he picked a partner that complemented his style. Where the Bryan brothers every year are the same old stuff. Yep. And if Bob or Mike isn't improving some facet of their game, a guy like Leander is, it's going to be tough. Well, Leander, I mean, he's, he's about 38, 39 now. And he's all, you know, he's... Yeah, he's like 58. He's 50. You know, no, he, <laughs> he, was, he was playing in the <laughs> 90s when I was playing. No joke. He, he had a win over Pete Sampras in singles. Uh, 28 years well, ago. Well, you said to me uh, a couple years ago when we did an interview like this that Leander was a guy who, as he got a little older, maybe lost a step. He's adding another layer to his game to kind of compensate yep. for maybe a teeny bit of physical decline, which is a great piece of advice for a rec player who's maybe getting a little bit older. Yeah, I think everyone says pick the right partner, but pick the right partner that's going to complement mm -hmm. the game and where you're going with it. If, you're, if you've lost your wheels in a, in a quick first step, get someone who's real fast. Grab someone a little younger than you. Grab someone that maybe serves better. You know, whatever that, you know, kind of winning combination is. And the way to, to do that is to play with a ton of guys within the ladder of your league or at your club or whatever. Get, get someone out there, play with everyone, play against everyone. You might find out you're, you've become a mixed double specialist, you know, like Kara Black or something. Mm -hmm. Anything's possible. Well, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's run through a couple of your uh, favorite uh, drills, exercises, help you guys improve actually your doubles games. actually my favorite Washington Castles right, there you go. drills. Favorite Castles drills. Uh, one final point, uh, today is Friday. Tickets are on sale now for the Castle season. Make sure you pick them up. I will be there. Awesome, uh, awesome event. What's the number? Uh, that's a good question. It'll be... 202 for tennis. What's okay, the area code? Look at that. 202. I is got it? like 202. 202. It is the area code yeah. in DC. 202 for but, tennis. But all the information will be surrounding this video, so you can grab it uh, in the description. So with that in mind, 
let's uh, let's hit these drills. Well, one of these days, I want you to show me your drills. My drills? I mean, they're they're a little advanced for you. I think. Oh, they I are know, actually yeah, kind of you know. I mean, I get that click me Brian Brothers and Will the Thrill, you know, doubles drills, and I'm thinking, you know, my brother bought it. I bought it. I know my brother definitely did. I'm lying. You just but. you just got it off a of torrent. Yeah, I, I, burned, I burned it. it. You pirated it. I pirated it. No, I didn't. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, well, this drill is called the smash and crash drill. It's great for those opponents that players may get that lob a lot. Everyone's always coming up to me and saying, Murphy, how do I defend that lob? The mm -hmm. lobbers in the club just lob me to death. Well, this is it. Instead of standing on top of the net, I want you to step a step or two back. Okay, so that I all back up. automatically sends a message to your opponent that you're in position to take that lob out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And then in this drill, the first ball I'm going to feed you is a volley. Because instead of thinking it's just going to be a lob, it's going to be a volley, mm -hmm. then an overhead, which you're in position for. Hi, the president! <laughs> nice. It does say United States of America on it. Yeah. So apparently trying to poach your big volley tennis, secrets. Big tennis man. Yeah, the president. He, that, that is true. All right, back to the smash and crash drill. Like I said, we're going to have you start in a position that puts you at a, uh, positive, in a positive place to cover that overhead. The drill goes like this. The first ball is going to be a volley. All right. Second ball, you're an overhead, which you're in position for. And then you're, I need you to crash. I need to come the back. The smash is the overhead. The crash is that, that, uh, that movement to the net. Because right. I want you to put your nose on top of that net. The closer you are to the net, the easier it is to put the ball away. Let's start it from the top. All right, so it sounds, it sounds like what you're saying is at first I start back because a quality lob is real likely. Yeah. But after I hit that overhead, because I'm hitting an overhead, it's, a, it's a, probably going to be a, a decent shot. Yep. The chances of them hitting another real good lob are low, so I need to crash the boards. Yep. And 100%. just try and pick off something that's up here. Yeah, that's floating. That's floating. The purpose of that overhead is to create a floater. All right. And at the end of the day, if, if you're the, the, the doubles team or the doubles player that's being aggressive, controlling the, the area above the net, I call it control, controlling the skies up here. Controlling the um, skies. That's okay. the whole drill. And you've take, the whole idea here is to take the, the lob out of the equation. So with this drill, you're going to get that first volley, like act as if I'm the returner. Okay. I hit the return right to you. You're in position for that lob, and right. here's the crash. Oh, cry. You didn't crash. crash. I didn't well, crash. I didn't crash. I was thinking. But that was better. I was thinking. But you can <laughs> see how that would work. And if we do it a little bit more intense, I'm going to take you to the next level. All you right. ready? All right. Here's the overhead. Here's the volley. And here's an overhead. Ah! Uh-oh. Choked. choked, and then the volley, choked. crash, crash, crash! Oh, there it is. And that's Will with fuzzy yellow balls. <laughs> Make it happen. So let's, so let's recap. Yeah. Um, it we sounds to me like that. there's a lot of vertical movement here you that's know, real the, important. The like Bryan brothers back. do this really yeah. well, the up and back action. Uh -huh. Because the truth is, even at the highest level, you know who, who does the lob play? The Woodies did, mm -hmm. six-time Wimbledon champs. Leander Payas Leander, yeah. loves the bumper because it's an equalizer. Well, what did the Bryans brothers do? They take a step back. Mm -hmm. No problem, buddy. Yep. Get it over my 6'5 frame. If you're a little shorter, step a little bit further back. But if you do stand far back, make sure when your server serves that ball, wait until the moment before that returner returns, do a little split step so you, now you're on the balls of your feet. You can go forward if mm -hmm. she does the dribble and yep. you're crashing, or your balance to take that overhead and put it away. Okay, so it's really the recognition of when to crash the boards. Exactly. Uh, that's important. Let me ask you one more thing. Where, um, where am I going based on the shot I hit? Like, if I hit a volley, what direction do I move in? If I that's, hit a volley back at you, or if I go cross court, is it going to change what I'm doing? Well, that's, that's an amazing uh, question. The, the standard rule, when in doubt, follow your shot. All right. So, for example, let me get a ball. If you were to hit that first volley back to me, you're going to go forward. Okay. If you're going to hit this overhead in the open court, over there, you're going to crash down crash the tee. This way. So, right. yeah. So, does that make sense? It does. It does. And then, when in doubt, number one, follow your shot. Go where the ball goes. 
Number two, volley cross court. By volleying, volleying cross court, it automatically takes your opponent out of the, the action. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you're my opponent, you hit it to me and I hit it cross court, I just hit it away from that. Okay. And tennis is a game of keep away, and mm -hmm. doubles is a game of angles. Okay. Awesome stuff. Woo! Come on! Okay, well, every doubles team and every tennis player is like a computer. And the secret of success on the tennis court is to, to be that virus for that computer. You want to create a bug, put a bug in the system. And one thing I like to tell my opponents, or even three fives, four fives, what works for them, is to get your opponent to move. Get them uncomfortable. Get them out of their comfort zone. How do we do that? On the return side of the court, you return short and low, almost like a drop shot, but not a drop shot. What that does, it takes the return of server, who's standing over here, makes him run up to the ball, uh -huh. Now you've got your partner at the net, you're moving forward, and I'm out of position. Okay, so I you're... look ridiculous, don't I? <laughs> and you've done that to me. No. You've been my virus. So, okay, so as the, I'm the returner, yep. and I'm leaving it short on you, yep. so if you're closing, you're going to be shoestringing it, and if you're staying back, then you're going to be uncomfortable because I'm forcing you to move forward. Yeah, it's a, it takes that lob out of the equation okay. that all these doubles players like to do and the amateurs like to do, but also it takes, it, it takes you from a defensive position into an offensive position in a second. Okay, so basically you're Agent Smith and I'm Morpheus and I'm the virus. Dude, you are the Matrix. I, I got to get a Matrix reference in there. Okay. <laughs> all right, so let's see. How does this work? You're, how do we all do right, this? Uh, this is the drill. Okay. I will feed like I'm serving, right? All right. Here's the serve. And do I leave it short like that over yeah, there? Yeah, but that's too short. Too, a little too short. I'm just you know, I'm in calibrating. The net is, you know, a, a computer has to calibrate, Murphy. Yeah, exactly. Calibrate He's the computer. Got to it up. Okay, so here's my serve. And I'm ready for you. And then I have to go up like this. There it is. Money ball. Sick. All right. And that's, where, that, that's what pays the bills, dude. Right there. You know? Okay. I'll even serve this one. Sun's in my eyes! Too deep. Too deep. That All one's right. too deep. The, the, the goal, inside the service line. The super goal is in that alley. Okay. See how I was? Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. Okay, great. And I'm, and I'm serving. I started serving the point, which should give me the advantage with a net player at the net, mm -hmm. but you've just neutralized the deal. And doubles is about neutralizing, taking a negative and making it a positive with plays like that. Nice. Awesome stuff. Thanks. Hi, I'm Luke. No, you're not. No, I'm not. And we I'm just, Murphy. We just talked about doing okay, it. Let's do that again. All right, hold on. Ready? 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 Today, Hi, I'm Luke. What? Today you can be Luke. Okay, today I can be Luke. Hi, I'm Luke. And I'm Murphy. And together, we're the Murphy brothers. Murphy we're, brothers. The, we're the Denton brothers. We're the Denton there brothers. We and we're going to bring you a little <laughs> rock and roll tennis right here at Castle Stadium at the Wharf here in Washington, D.C. On what site? On what site? The Wharf site. On the site of the Wharf. On the site of the Wharf. Directions, address, things surrounding this video. We'll tell you exactly where it is. Well, that's everything you need to know about playing great doubles. From Castle's coach, Murphy Jensen, you're Luke Jensen. Luke Jensen. Thanks for watching this, guys. Get tickets. Come to the matches this summer. It's awesome stuff. I really enjoy watching you uh, coach it up out there and uh, take the title home for the, for the Castle. When in DC. doubt, cheat. Uh, well, call the lines close. Keep Hook. it even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got to. <laughs>